let's see. So I think maybe uh, I'd explain a bit about uh, my motivations for space uh, and, and starting SpaceX. Um, it was uh, certainly not from the standpoint of uh, what I thought would uh, be the easiest way to make money. Um, uh, space is particularly difficult. Um, but uh, I, I do think that one of the most important things that humanity can do uh, is to become multiplanetary and expand beyond Earth um, and, and, of course, bring the rest of life as we know it along with us. Um, for, for, for the past four billion years, uh, life has been confined to Earth, and this is the first time in, in four billion years that it is possible for life to um, become multiplanetary. And um, that, that window may be open for a, a long time, and I'm you know, reasonably optimistic uh, about life on Earth, um, but it may be open for a short time. And, um, and if it is only open for a short time, we, we must take advantage of it and, and take action now uh, to make life multiplanetary. Um, in, in order to do that, the, 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 the cost and, of course, the reliability of space transport must be improved dramatically um, by ultimately uh, orders of magnitude. Um, um, it, as, as it is right now, we, we can't send anyone to Mars, uh, not, not even one person. Um, and in order to make life multiplanetary, and which would mean that a, a Mars base would have to be self-sustaining, um, the, the, uh, you'd need to, to, to carry on the order of perhaps at least 10,000 people um, and tens of thousands of tons of equipment. Um, so, um, so, so, so really, really dramatic improvements in space transport technology are needed. Um, and uh, SpaceX has been started to, to try to move things in that direction. Um, and, and really, if, if, there's a, if things are on a path of continuous improvement, then you, know, you can envision the point at which we would be able to, humanity would be able to do that. Um, but the, the, the sad thing is that space has not been on a path of continuous improvement. It has arguably been on a path of decline. Um, if you consider the fact that uh, we were able to go to the moon in 1969, and then in the 80s, that dropped down to being access to, to low Earth orbit. Um, with the end of the shuttle, that will be there will be no American access, manned access to space, at least until um, uh, perhaps SpaceX or others are able to, to provide that access. Um, and so, if you if you extrapolate that, that's that's a that the trend line is in the wrong direction. Um, needs to, to be dramatically reversed. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful SpaceX will make a, a, a significant contribution in that direction. Um, no, I should say that this is uh, in partnership with NASA. So this is, I, I do believe that this is very much a, you know, it's a, it, it, there's, a there's a strong private role and a strong public role. Um, and um, it's, you know, SpaceX has had many successes on the commercial front. Um, but, but we also ha do have uh, NASA to thank very much for uh, our progress with the uh, Dragon and, and Falcon 9. Um, you know, we would not be where we are today with that, without their help. So that, that, is, that is an important role as well. So um, but, but going to the crux of things, like <clears throat> in order to achieve the uh, orders of magnitude reduction in uh, the cost of space transport. The, the pivotal invention that's needed is rapidly uh, and fully reusable uh, or, or transport. Um, th those are those are important qualifications. Um, you know, just like the with, the with the Wright brothers, it wasn't it wasn't a flight. They didn't actually invent flight. They they invented controlled power flight. That was really the the, the important thing. Um, they've been controlled flight. They've been power flight, but not controlled power power flight. So. With, with rapid and complete reusability, uh, we, we can reduce the, the cost of space transport by a factor of over 100. Um, if you look at the, the cost of a Falcon 9, to produce a Falcon 9, which is comparable in size to sort of a, uh, say, a Boeing 777 or something like that, and it actually weighs more on, on liftoff than a, than a 747. Um, a Falcon 9, which, which is a, it's a very cost efficiently produced vehicle, is around 50 to $60 million. But the cost of the propellant per flight 
is only about $150,000. So if we can fully and rapidly reuse vehicles, but the cost per flight, um, at least the marginal cost per flight, can drop from, say, $60 million to $150,000. Um, and this is the reason why we're able to, to use airplanes. You know, uh, um, why, why doesn't it cost hundreds of millions to fly a Bell supply on airplanes? Because that airplane can be used uh, thousands of times over. Um, but this is the absolutely important invention that must take place, whether it's by SpaceX or somebody else. Um, it is a rapidly and fully reusable uh, launch vehicle. Um, that, that's something that, that, that we're going to try to do. Um, and I, I think we've got, got a solution in mind that, that could do the trick, but it's um, that, that remains to be seen. We have a lot to prove to get there. Um, but I think if, if we or, or some other company can, can invent that, then, then that will be the, the fundamental thing that enables life to become all the time. Um, yeah, so, uh, and I shall to, to touch on, on Island uh, more for a moment. Um, I should say that The Moon is a Harsh Mistress is one of my, my favorite books. Um, I really, really love that. Um, and uh, uh, it's, you know, I, this is this is uh, one of the best awards I've ever received. Actually, probably the best award actually. <laughs>